Hello, I'm Chris Atanas. I'm a KMP developer. Today, I'm going to be going into the universal architecture system, universal application architecture. Uh, I've been watching all these different videos. I was like, I was watching some of these older videos uh, on older computer technology. I put so all of a sudden I had a flash. I put it together. Oh yeah, update uh, on the portal. So they got the AI model trained up. They got the funding going. And they said that the tool should be, uh, the, 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 the training model should be done and they should be out on Tuesday to close that up. So I hope that'll be done and out of my hair. Okay, so what I'm talking about here is this idea of a universal application architecture. And what, what are you talking about? I'm talking about this, the original computers. The original computers were people. People, they would be lined up in these rows and they would break these problems down into the simple, these simple steps. And these, these people, mostly women, I'd say it's like 95% women. There's a dude here and there uh, that was, they would sit and they would run uh, usually manually, but sometimes they'd use machines. Um, and let's, uh, let's look into a little bit of the past. Here we go. In the past, the work was done by human computers. Computer? No. One who computes. A reckoner. A calculator. Intrigued by accounts of Halley's Comet, French astronomer Alexis Claude Clairaut set out to compute the date of its return. He divided the problem into parts, and with the help of two colleagues, rushed to complete the calculation before the comet's return. The result was surprisingly accurate for its day and one of the earliest examples of people collaborating to perform complex computations. The march of human computing accelerated in the Industrial Revolution. The new strategies of mass production, division of labor, and manager supervision that were transforming manufacturing were also effective in computing. Complex calculations, divided into simple parts, computed by teams of laborers with basic math skills, and fast results. Computing opportunities now opened to women because they were skilled, but also because mass production depended upon their cheaper labor. Yeah, it wasn't really computing that. It just meant them doing the mathematical cal calculating, doing the doing the doing the uh, mechanical calculation. They're not actually doing any computing. That's a little misnomer. But but they were. That's what they were called computers. Pe these people were actually the computers. During the Great Depression. So that's, I just want to get into that. They get into a little more detail. I'm going to leave links to all this stuff, uh, including links to this document so you can, you can follow along. I think, uh, yeah, here's another one. Let's check this out. During clerical work, most of Bartik's colleagues were women. And more than ever, these female computers were integral to the war effort. To accurately shoot an artillery shell depended on a number of factors, including angle of fire, range to target, wind speed, and weather conditions. Without a personal computer on hand to calculate these ballistic trajectories, a soldier couldn't be expected to do the correct math off the top of his head in the heat of battle. So they depended on firing tables. Firing tables were essentially sets of pre-calculated trajectories that soldiers could reference so they could quickly fire upon their target given almost any circumstance. Each table comprised around a thousand trajectories, each one hand calculated by a human computer. But even with the mathematical strength displayed by Bartik and her colleagues, the US military wanted a way to calculate these trajectories even faster. That's when John Malkley and Jay Okay, so they were doing it, so it's like, yeah, they were doing it by hand before this, and they go to go into the digital stuff. And because they got to this, got to practice breaking down the problem and managing the problem into these small, tiny, little, uh, very simple to do calculations, series of calculations, they discovered that uh, they could probably do this electronically as well. So here's another. Los Alamos National Laboratory physicist James L. Smith. Los Alamos National Laboratory physicist James L. Smith explains how the definition of the word computer has changed since the 1940s. The word computer didn't exist then. They had women doing calculations with, with hand machines during a Manhattan Project. And they also got the first things from IBM. But these weren't really computing. They were sorting and doing rather simple things. And there was nothing in the sense of a modern computer. But those women doing those calculations, they called them computers. Gene Bucker. Mitz right. Okay, so that's the basic idea. Let me see. There's another one here. Okay. Uh, that's the next section. Okay. So that's what these people are doing. They, they, they had a desk. They're given a, they're given a task. They, they have some, uh, uh, each one has an ability throughput, some individual throughput that they can do, some stories, some series of construct, some number of things they can do per day. Um, and here's the kinds of things. They can answer the phone. I mean, they can stay on the phone to, you know, 100 people per day max. This is like the maximum level of the best worker, right? The, be, uh, the best day. Uh, under all, everything, all circumstances is the same, right? I mean, everything's perfect. They could do 1,000, you know, 100 people a day. It's like one person at a time. 
Because, you know, a clerk can only handle one person, a human clerk. You know, if it was a it was a computer, they could handle many. But let's just, in this case, if the, the human can only listen on the phone at one time. There's no storage either. It's always it's just live connection. Once the connection's gone, it's gone. There's no record of it. It's a, that's how that, that phone system works. And then we also have the uh, sending and receiving mail. Like, he has a mailbox. Just this person... You know, up here they they have, a, they have a inbox, right? Inbox, outbox, right here on their desk. Inbox, outbox, and you know somebody drops off the problems, and as they work through them, you know, as they work through them, whatever they have to do here, they put it back in the mailbox, and this goes back out, and then it goes out to the unfinished. So they could do, for, let's say, five thousand of those a day. It could be even just something as even a small thing like uh, checking each item on, on a checklist. That could be an that could be one of these messages. But it's it's like having email. Uh, or a piece of mail, same thing, and it's stored, right? It's stored, st so they're stored somewhere over or here in the network. It's switched around from one place to the next, and then eventually comes in to the mailbox and gets stored until you read it or delete it or move it or whatever, uh, and the clerk reads it. So, and here's the maximum throughput for the medium. So you, you get maximum ten thousand people a day coming through this for this particular office. Now, this this clerk can only handle hundred a day, but that this this network out here, that the the actual network, you could have ten thousand people possibly coming into this office if they get if the office can handle it. If the office can't handle it, they can only handle this one clerk can only handle this a hundred people a day. So that's this is the maximum, and that's the phone network. Uh, and then we also have uh, the mailbox could do a hundred thousand messages a day in or out, um, a maximum, and five hundred forms a day uh, in total of long term storage. So when the clerk wants to send something. Uh, uh, off to long term because they can't keep all the files in this file cabinet. It turns it off the, to the storage facility. So that's off site. Uh, and then he also has an on site uh, in the office. There's a little filing cabinet. That's a symbol there. Uh, and the reason why we use these little disk platters, uh, we'll get into that. And uh, so here's the the office. Office is really a what the, in the computer biz they call a service or a microservice. It's the Bunch of different works for it, um, but that's basically an office is the same thing as a service. The clerk is the processing module, the processor, or a microservice. It could be sync or async, um, depending on what they're doing. They can, you know, can it can stream things, which is like the phone is like streaming. Uh, you have to, you know, it's a two way communication, or it's a one way communication, but you know, it's but it's always live. It has to have a live connection. Right, it's not just send it and forget. It's 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 constantly on, and then there's the the mailbox, which is you know like the emails. It's send and forget, and when something shows up, it shows up on its own, and uh, and you have to, you have to read it. And once it's read, you can you mark it as read or delete it. You know those are the kinds of things you do with the mailbox, and that's asynchronous um, because you could once you send it, you don't know how long it takes. It's when it gets there, it gets there, and when it, it gets to your when it comes to your into your box, you don't know how long it took to get there. You don't really care. Uh, but that's asynchronous versus the, the phone. If you're on the phone and somebody says, okay, hold on. I gotta go do the thing. And you have to sit there and wait like this on the phone. Do, 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 do. That's synchronous. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that's, and the file cabinet is the, is your hard disk, the persistent storage, the data on the office. The, there's a, hard, a solid state drive. There's like tape backup billion words for it, but it's the same thing as the file cabinets. There's there's a lady, that's her calculator, that's what she's, her job is to do some sort of calculation. Um, it might be a sorting, it might be some other task, it might be answering the phone, it might be taking messages for someone, there's all kinds of things, but there's usually a clerk who has some level of capacity to handle th many things, you know, some seemingly, more, there's only one thing at a time, but it's like, it seemed like she could answer the phone, do a little light filing, <laughs> that kind of stuff. So it depends on what this clerk is, is set here for. For this particular office and what this per, you know her role is and this is the filing cabinet back here and here's some here's some data that's already been stored that she can look up if she needs to so that's kind of how it's that's kind of the idea that's really the big idea so let's look over here to a better more uh, complex example um and this is you know the officer service and you have an office manager uh that you know tracks the progress and handles the exceptions for a live agent and the live agent you know so like it's this could be, I don't know, maybe like a, a, a um, an insurance office, possibly. Um, let, me, let me zoom in out a little bit here. There we go. 
Let me zoom out a little more. There we go. Um, so this could be like a, you know, some sort of uh, like an insurance office, maybe. And this person's like, uh, so you're, you call in for a quote and you're calling in over the phone system from a, another office or your house or whatever. It comes in over the phone system and that lab agent, you know, it's like, oh, hello, how can I help you? I want insurance for my car or whatever. And she's a really good agent. She can do a hundred people per second. Uh, this person can handle, you know, a hundred phone calls. She's like, hello, hello, hello. How are you? How are you? She says, you can handle a hundred people per second. So this is like a, you know, the computer version, right? So instead of a hundred people a day, it's hundred people a second. Um, and she and one and one, uh, you know, one computer can handle a hundred streams. And this is just uh, arbitrary numbers. They could be much higher, much lower, depending what you're doing, right? Um, okay. So and then you have a, an office manager, which is some sort of task that's overseeing these these operations and making sure everything works properly and if there's any exceptions it, it has to deal with that um and then the the agent you know says hold on let me check and it will call you know call over to some clerk uh that still check the records you know have the how this person's you know how many wrecks they've been in or whatever uh with this validation process so it's off site and those so they they assemble a form together and they and they query the database over here and it goes chickity 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 and then it gets back the response and then the file clerk goes okay give him the insurance or his oh this guy's very high risky or he's gonna give him really high rates so the, the flight the clerk will call over to this live agent who you know could be on the phone maybe they have to call, call him back you know that would be an asynchronous right so it's synchronous while they're on the call and they have to call them back you know that must be an that's more like a mailbox thing because we don't really do a lot of call calling back in the computer business. We usually like send a message and uh, you'll hear it's like an email, right? You, you rarely will get a call back from customers. Although that's possible, right? You could actually do that. But, uh, but the computer usually sends you an email or makes a notification in your application or something like that. And your in your uh, in your uh, mobile application. So that's that's how that callback would happen. It's like, hey, we don't normally the computer doesn't ever normally call you. Unless you're doing one of those uh, pin pin number things, um, you know, two factor authentication, that kind of stuff. Um, so, but it like, but the mail network is like the e same as the email network. You know, say you can send and receive. Uh, this file clerk can send five thousand messages a second. You know, possibly. So this would be a, like the computer level computer in computer time here. Um, let's see here. Okay, so this is this is. This is the same kind of thing. So you have an office manager right here. This guy's like, <laughs> this guy right here, right? he's like, uh, are you gonna come to work today? Or are you just gonna take a nap? He's like, uh, I'm just so hungover from the party last night. Uh, and look at, you know, the, the room is really well lit, as you can see, <laughs> it's not a dungeon at all. And it's like well lit and people are very happy to be at their desks. With no windows or anything. <laughs> anyway, okay, quick goofing off. But you see that um, you know there's these rows of desks that everyone has their the paper, the problems that they're working on for the day or whatever their quota, and they know how far they have to go. And then here's the people like checking checking the results here. I guess I guess that's what that's going on there. Um, so yeah, so the live live agent works synchronous like a streaming service, you know, audio, video, or stock quotes. Um, and the file clerk, you know, works asynchronous or synchronous. You know, this could be a this could be a synchronous call over here. For the you know, it could be this could be set up as a synchronous call to the service where the file clerk gets on the phone and you know, simulates that like okay, it streams the data back and forth because we need really high high speed data. You know, if it's doing some kind of stock service, if this was an insurance, if it was doing stocks, you'd want to have like you know a stream on and on at all times. Versus, you know, if the, if the, like the file clerk goes, okay, I'll make the inquiry and it comes over here and it comes back in a couple of days or whatever, or a couple of hours or a couple of minutes, just you know, depending on what's going on. So they got to check all the data in their databases and confer against each other. So that's that's how an office and a service and these mediums, um, this is kind of how the, the similarities between computers. So if you could ask your architect to break it down as if it was people involved, it actually makes it, a, a common language that everyone can use. Um, so some of the common topologies you'll see uh, is 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 like for this you know for this like a sales department for like a product. So uh, if you a service some sort of service, so you'll have a customer will place an order via we'll, we'll call the receptionist 
We'll call it, we'll connect to the sales department, right? And the customer will then call it, tell the sales department, I want to buy widget X. And the sales department will say, no problem. And they'll say, put, what's your credit card number? Blah, 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 blah. And so the sales department will pass it off to the order department and it'll generate the order. And the order department goes, oh, we need to go charge the account. So it'll, it'll contact the accounting department, which will confirm the charges are, are, are good or not. Um, this is the happy path, right? And then the order department will then say, well, ship the product. We just charge the card. The shipping will go say, uh, confirms the shipment. And then also the order department may confirm the status back to the sales department. And the sales department in this, in this scenario it happens to be set up this way. The sales department then informs the customer. He calls the customer, or sends them an email or, or, um, uh, whatever, however, however the customer is, however, however this widget system needs to be set up, you know, how, how fast it is to get responded. So these are all could be sync or async. Uh, usually these things are, you know, these are pretty synchronous through here. Uh, it waits for the, everything to come through, but they could be a kind of set up, set up asynchronously as well. So, um, and these pipes, these pipes are kind of modeled after this pneumatic pipe system. So a lot of these business processes that are still used in computers and a lot of ideas are coming from this pipe ideas where you want to have a direct, the fastest way to have a direct connection is to go underground or go up through these build up to a building without having somebody walk it up, you put it in these pneumatic tools. And they'll using vacuum will suck these things, <laughs> suck these things around these messages. So they will be super fast from floor to floor. This used to be like a major big deal way. Uh, and it was like, you know, it was a career, it was a career choice for, for a young lad. Uh, yeah. So there was, it was a way to do a very high tech way of sending, um, sending stuff around back in the 1800s. And you know, the only, the only place it's like, I see it live today is, is inside banks at the tellers. So let's just play this a little bit. So, so, they would put these things underground and all, all over the place. So they, I'll, I'll put, I'll let you see that video. I can go to watch that guy's video. Um, okay. So there's talking about the, so, um, let's see here. So there, I'm talking about sync and async. So what, are, what is that? What is that exactly? So with synchronous, um, you have to, you, 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 the client will, this is, this is the client, this is the office uh, or the customer. Uh, he makes a request to the office, and while he's on the phone, the the office blocks while you're processing. Hold, oh, please. Uh, and then the response says, "Oh, he'll be right with you." And that's when the response comes back, right? So this this is called a blocking a blocking call. <laughs> that's what they use this word to use. Okay, and then you have the asynchronous, which is the client. It's more like sending a piece of email, like an email or or a, a regular piece of mail where you send the request and it could take as long as it takes. And when the results are ready, it'll send it back to you. Even if you have a website and you hit the refresh, 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 it'll, it won't update until it comes back. So you're not sitting there holding on the phone. You go off and do something else while this processing is happening. So that's the big idea between sync and async. It's like, well, one should you use one, one should you use the other. It's like, how do you want to set the office up? How many people do you want to have working there? Because with the async, you have to have someone uh, to, take, to take the message, right? That means you have to have a processor that's live, a processor that's taking a message for you, right? Like you have to have something there operating. With synchronous, uh, that something is the one thing that if you don't have you, that one thing you have there is the thing that's taking the message. And if that thing's not there, nothing works, right? So. So that's what that's the really the main difference between sync and async. So sync cons is their bottlenecks so are not equally easily optimized. Uh, there's difficult to scale, and the error error handling is difficult. Uh, and the pros are it makes the easy to do transactions over here uh, easy to implement. Just makes sense. Just wait until the next thing. Wait until the next thing. Wait until the next thing. It makes sense, and it encourages the talk atomic operations. Like everything has to be finished, has to go all the way through the. Uh, all the way through to the end, uh, and then uh, and if it if it succeeds, great. And if it doesn't, cancel everything. So it encourages a very autonomous city, but um, the problems are uh, 
uh, like with a well, like with, with okay with, so with async you you get more complex to build it's, it's definitely harder to build the systems you have to have systems that you know send stuff back and have error conditions like it is a little more it is more complicated and you have to have uh, it's actually more complicated to monitor and to debug but it scales right you can scale it up um you can have very decoupled horizontal scaling so instead of having just one processor you can have 25 people and you have to set the office up to handle having 25 receptionists or 25 people in the back office. You got to be able to split the work up, you know, cleverly. So that's the whole, that's the whole big idea. It's like sync is pretty easy to do. And for small use cases, it makes a sense. But as soon as you want to scale something, you're going to have to get it asynchronous. So, um, and this is kind of a, uh, the kind of the two different ways um, people usually will handle uh, uh, these operations on a computer. So you have uh, man it's called managing the workflows. Whether you so you can have one central person who manages each one of these services and will call each service in turn. You know, calls the accounting and it calls the orders and it calls the shipping. You know, you know, you know, all that stuff. So you have one person that tracks that versus each office, each 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 individual role, uh, uh, a department inside the office manages things. It can get a little hairy. Now it's much more efficient this way. If you get a pipeline going that has limited back back action, uh, it makes more sense, right? Than having an orchestrator to check each thing. But as soon as you have uh, any kind of like advanced error conditioning handling, this becomes a little a little, a little uh, more hairy to deal with. So here's a little more better example. So here's a customer. He's not, he's not there on the right using a cell phone. This is the HTTP over the internet, right? Uh, and play, they place an order. It gets a load. It comes into a load balancer, all right? Uh, and that's just the receptionist. When you hear the word load balancer, it's just the receptionist. And this bus thing, you can think of the bus thing is instead of having this tubes here, the bus <laughs> is the, the 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 is in between the rows here. Is the is the walkway so between the rows is the bus. <laughs> you just go from desk to desk and you hand things off and people think pick things up. And you can you know drop stuff off whatever that's that's what the bus is. <laughs> so this 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 icon right here that's all that's representing is it means that anything shipping can can talk to accounting accounting can talk to orders orders can talk to sales it's over this you know bus or you know like a phone network or email network. Whatever. Uh, let's see. So this is called choreography. There's no there's no leader right. There's no leader here. It's just this this kind of thing over here. It's called choreography. This is the style. So uh, an order comes in. Uh, it says, I'd like to place the order. And then it goes over to sales first. Sales says, oh, okay. I'll generate the order. And the order goes over to accounting. Accounting is now has to deal with there's an error or whatever. They have to, you know, do, does accounting talk to this person? Does accounting send a message to over or orders? You have to, it's like, how do you set the office up? What are you trying to do? What's the most efficient way? Mm, you, this is where the... This is what part of the software engineering comes in, is how to deal with this kinds of stuff. And here's another part of it here. So here's the orchestrator where there's a central orchestrator. So a customer comes in, places an order, load balancer says, oh, okay, well, you want to go over the sales first. And the order gets generated and the orchestrator then takes over, right? You know, or the order, the, the load balancer goes right to the orchestrator first and the orchestrator goes, oh, okay, we uh, generate the order, order received, right? Uh, and then it's to charge the account, confirms charge, Ship the order, convert shipped, ship order. It'll do all the error cases in here. So if there's a rollback in something, it'll it'll figure out which you know which order's got a problem. The shipping is you know, is it out of, is it out of stock or back ordered or did it you know is the order been shipped or the card charge not charge not get card not get charged that kind of stuff. So there's a central leader, and those are the generally the two styles. There's other styles too, but um, uh, and there's this other thing that people talk about like where you can. Uh, Oh, how the air conditions happen. So there's like the style where the order orchestrator will go to each one of these things and pre-check, like pre-approve the the charge of the card, pre 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 check to see if there's in stock before it even starts the you know official order, right? And it'll pre-check you know that there's these systems are all up, and then it'll try and go forward with it. But you know there may be a chance of failure even then. So but it's got less of a chance. So that's right, blah blah blah. So there's other strategies depending on your use case. And how you're handling uh, and what you're trying to do, um, it depends on what you're trying to do. So there's just work, work. Uh, there's trade-offs. So the cons and pros are here. Trade-offs, bottom line, 
Uh, so it just depends on what you're trying to do. So if you're using choreography, you get the uh, you get the the best performance with the choreography, and with orchestration, you get the best work and con flow control and air handling. So it depends on what you're doing. If you're doing a lightweight pipeline, maybe choreography is the best way to get to go it. But if you're doing some kind of a, a sales flow or some sort of uh, thing that has like lots of potential air conditionings that all these different states, you know, maybe orchestration is the way to go. And I got some little, some notes over here. If you'd like to read those, which I'm not going to read. Uh, and let's see here. Uh, so that's about it. That's your universal app uh, translator. I just went over some, some basic use cases of it, but the basic idea is that uh, you can uh, replace these, 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 uh, very computer sounding terms with people. And you can have your architect break this down for you because this is where it all came from was actually using people. And people like most people in the computer industry forgot that this is where these terms came from and where these ideas of managing the work came from. And it seems like this is the best way to do it. Eh, it probably is, but these were the smart people who came up with these ways of breaking down these problems uh, way before uh, electronic computers came along. When electronic computers came along, it just became natural to start doing it this way because they'd already been breaking these problems down to have large teams of people do it manually. All right. Um, give me a thumbs up and a like and subscribe and all that. And I'm Chris and uh, I, I really appreciate you watching this. This is my first draft of this and um, I might do another version. Uh, but uh, I got my ideas out, I think. And let me know what you think in the comment section. And of course you can, you know, get a copy of this document um, in the comment section. All right. Or in the, in the diddly do down there. All right. Okay. Stop now. <laughs>